This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but I'll talk more about that later. It appears like Tesla is on track to start production of the Cybertruck very soon. And while there has been quite a bit of new information surfaced recently about the Cybertruck, Tesla has not yet released several key details like range, battery size, efficiency, price, etc. In this video, I'm going to attempt to fill in some of those gaps and predict when we might see the first deliveries and also predict the battery size, range, efficiency, and pricing of the Cybertruck based on the information that we do know. And spoiler alert, it appears very possible that for instance, the Cybertruck battery pack, at least the smallest battery pack size, may actually be smaller than I and others have predicted. So let's dive into these exciting details. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. First of all, let's talk about when we might actually see the first deliveries of the Cybertruck. And also I want to predict how many Cybertrucks I believe Tesla will be able to build and deliver here in 2023. Back in Tesla's Q4 2022 conference call, Elon Musk said, quote, for 2023, Cybertruck will not be a significant contributor, but it will be next year. We do expect production to start sometime this summer. When it comes to this summer date prediction by Elon Musk, it does appear like Tesla is on track to hit that um, because for instance, on April 1st, Tesla put up a teaser video of the Cybertruck being crash tested on Twitter. And while this video never actually shows the truck hitting anything, it does apparently show that they are crash testing the Tesla Cybertruck. And um, it shows that Tesla is very likely in the very final stages before actual production starts. Another sign that leads me to believe that Tesla is on track for production of the Cybertruck comes from a video that was recently posted on the YouTube channel, Met God in Wilderness, that featured the Cybertruck driving on a suspension test track at Tesla's Fremont factory, which once again is another great sign and shows that they are doing some final testing of the truck. In addition to all that, Elon Musk on April 1st did tweet out the following, walked whole Cybertruck production line at Giga Texas for several hours earlier today going to be awesome. So barring any major issues that come up, since Tesla is doing some final testing of the vehicle, and since Elon Musk was actually walking the production line, I believe it's very possible that we could see first deliveries happen sometime, say like July, or at the latest, August. And I believe Tesla is going to hit a first delivery sometime this summer as Elon Musk predicted. However, we need to make sure that we temper our expectations a little bit when it comes to how many Cybertrucks that will actually be delivered here in 2023, uh, because Elon Musk in that conference call did make some comments and basically implied that they don't expect a lot of Cybertrucks to be uh, built or delivered here in 2023, but 2024 really should be the year when Cybertruck hits higher volume production and higher volume deliveries. Okay, beyond first delivery dates and production volumes, let's talk a little bit about battery pack size. So a lot of the other trucks on the market, a lot of the other electric trucks on the market have very large battery packs. For instance, the Hummer EV truck has a battery pack over 200 kilowatt hours, and Ram recently unveiled their 1500 REV electric truck, which maxes out with a battery pack size of around 229 kilowatt hours. Those are really large battery packs. However, I expect the Cybertruck battery pack to be a bit smaller than that, and I believe even the largest Cybertruck battery pack will be smaller than those two examples, for instance. And in addition, the smallest Cybertruck battery pack, that size may actually be quite a bit smaller than a lot of people think and what I previously thought. When Tesla launches the Cybertruck, I believe they'll offer two different battery sizes. I believe one battery size will feature a single layer of 4680 battery cells, and a second option will feature two layers of 4680 battery cells, essentially being twice the capacity of the small pack. But how much capacity will each of these have, and could the single layer stack pack, could that actually uh, be as small as 100 kilowatt hours and still offer 300 miles or so of range? Well, I wanna dive into some data and talk about this, uh, but before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to SPAN for sponsoring this video. The SPAN Smart Electrical Panel eliminates the need for a separate hardwired critical loads panel. Using the iOS or Android app, you can easily move circuits into one of three categories like the must-have category, which is given priority during a backup, 
the nice to have category, which will be powered until your battery system reaches a 50% charge, and the not essential category, which is off during outages, allowing you to only use energy where it is needed most and extend your battery backup time. Try to do that with your existing system. To find out more and get a quote for your particular situation, go over to span.io or click the link in the video description. And when you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. At Tesla's March 1st Investors Day this year, they talked a lot about their master plan part three, and they promised that they were going to release a white paper later on. Well, they recently released their white paper and Amongst all the details in that white paper, um, as Gregor Truck on Twitter pointed out, Tesla did include a chart in that master plan part three and in the category of large sedans, SUVs, and trucks, which as they listed here, the Tesla equivalent would be the Model S, X, and the Cybertruck. They have listed here a pack size of 100 kilowatt hours. Now I do understand this is not necessarily indicative uh, saying that the Cybertruck will indeed have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. However, I think it actually is realistic for Tesla to have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in the Cybertruck and still be able to achieve 300 miles of EPA rated range. I wanna talk a little bit about that and talk about why I believe that's a possibility. Now, the Cybertruck should be equipped with underbody castings and a structural battery pack equipped with 4680 batteries. However, could the lower than expected energy density of their Gen 1 4680 battery cells lead to Tesla not hitting their range targets? Well, let's look at the 4680 equipped Model Y pack for comparison because due to lower than expected energy density for the first generation cells, with its 828 individual battery cells, that pack only has a total capacity of a bit under 72 kilowatt hours according to these estimates, which is somewhere just a bit under 10 kilowatt hours less than the 2170 battery equipped version. Now, of course, we do need to consider the fact that the Tesla Cybertruck is quite a bit larger of a vehicle than the Model Y, thus it will have room for more battery cells and allow for a larger battery pack. However, if you needed to build a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, with the Gen 1 4680 battery cells that each have around 86.5 watt hours per battery cell, that 100 kilowatt hour pack would need around 1156 individual 4680 batteries, which would be an increase of 39.6% more battery cells than are currently in the 828 cell structural Model Y battery pack. While the Cybertruck is bigger and it will allow for more battery cells in the battery pack, I don't think it's going to allow for quite that many battery cells. Um, based on some information that Matthew Donegan Ryan on Twitter shared out, the Cybertruck wheelbase is around 27.4% longer than the Model Y, and the width is somewhere around 11% greater than the Model Y, which once again does show that the Cybertruck is quite a bit larger than the Model Y. Uh, those numbers don't seem to add up to uh, allow enough space for somewhere close to 40% more battery cells. So I believe more energy dense battery cells are needed to even hit a single layer 100 kilowatt hour pack. However, the good news is I do believe Tesla has started production of a more energy dense second generation battery cell at Gigafactory Texas. Notice the clue that Tesla showed at their March 1st investor day in this slide comparing battery factories. Down near the bottom of the slide, you can see that with Tesla's newest 4680 battery production at Gigafactory Texas, it includes less processes than the pilot facility and the battery cells themselves have one less part. I've talked about this in past videos, but I believe the difference here is the fact that with their new factories, they moved over to a second generation 4680 battery cell. Also, as I talked about in a past video, a patent application from Tesla was recently published that was entitled Battery Cell Having Welded Battery Cap that describes a move from a crimped battery cap to a welded design that is much more compact and thus allows for more room for the electrode portion of the battery cell, which then leads to more energy dense batteries. While this battery cap change may seem somewhat insignificant, um, when you actually look at the side-by-side -side pictures of the old design and a new design, it does appear like it allows for quite a bit more room for the active electrode material, which once again could have a bigger energy density gain than you might think. In addition, I do believe that in the future, Tesla will add a small percentage of silicon to the anode of the 4680 batteries, which once again should increase the energy density further. And there are a number of other tweaks that could be made to the battery cell to increase the energy density. All in all, I believe with the changes that Tesla has made to their second generation battery cells, I believe it's very possible 
that with their second generation battery that they've either hit or gotten close to their original target for these battery cells, which I believe the original 4680 battery target was for each battery cell to have 98 watt hours. And this is based on a rumor that at Troy Testlight tweeted out in February of last year. So if each 4680 battery cell holds 98 watt hours instead of 86.5, a 100 kilowatt hour pack would instead only need 1,020 batteries. And 1,020 batteries is only 23% more than the 828 that currently make up the structural battery pack in the Model Y. And this 23% more number does seem to fit better into the space constraints that I believe Tesla will have with the Cybertruck. So based on this, my estimate is that the dual motor Cybertruck battery pack will feature a single stack of 4680 battery cells. And this pack will be made with more energy dense generation two 4680 batteries and will have somewhere around 1,020 battery cells with a capacity of around 100 kilowatt hours. The dual stack version would of course be somewhere around twice that capacity. However, will a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack be enough for Tesla to hit 300 miles of range or so with a dual motor version? I personally believe that Tesla can actually do that. One of the main reasons why I believe this battery pack size may be as small as 100 kilowatt hours for the dual motor version comes down to the fact that Tesla builds extremely efficient vehicles that are generally far ahead of the competition with the exception of Lucid. For example, the long range all wheel drive Model Y is over 21% more efficient according to EPA data than an equivalent Ford Mustang Mach-E all wheel drive variant. Because of this, why wouldn't the Tesla Cybertruck then be much more efficient than an equivalent Ford F-150 Lightning as well, which according to my calculations is able to travel a bit over 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. The smallest battery pack size option for the Ford F-150 Lightning has 98 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, and that gives it an EPA rated range of 240 miles. A 21% improvement on that number would equate to a range of around 290 miles or so. So Tesla hitting somewhere around 300 miles of range with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack doesn't seem so crazy when you look at this comparison. And when you look at just how much more efficient I expect the Cybertruck to be over the Ford F-150 Lightning. One big reason why I believe the Cybertruck will be more efficient than a lot of people think comes down to how aerodynamic the design may actually be. Back in November of 2019, Elon Musk replied to a tweet from Interesting Engineering that was regarding the aerodynamics of the Cybertruck. Elon Musk wrote, with extreme effort, Cybertruck might hit a 0.30 drag coefficient, which would be insane for a truck, requires tweaking many small details. Elon then responded to a tweet from Everyday Astronaut and wrote, Overall shape is good for low drag coefficient. Matters a lot how you trip airflow and edges and guide air around wheels like an invisible sculpture. When it comes to how this drag coefficient compares to other competitors' trucks, if the Tesla Cybertruck is able to achieve a coefficient of drag of just 0.30, here's how that might compare to the competition. The Rivian R1T does reportedly have a coefficient of drag of around 0.30, so that might be equal to the Cybertruck. However, when you look at the Ram 1500 REV, the Ford F-150 Lightning, and the Hummer EV truck, you can see that it's very possible that the Cybertruck is much more aerodynamic than these trucks. Thus, that would help boost the range with a smaller battery pack. When you look at the Cybertruck as a whole and you add to that aerodynamic efficiency, Tesla's very efficient powertrains, and also the weight savings attributed to underbody castings and the structural battery pack integration, 300 miles of range seems very doable for a Cybertruck with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. In addition, if the tri-motor Cybertruck has twice the battery capacity, it could very well get well over 500 miles of range and actually approach 600 miles of range. I believe it's very possible that Tesla was hinting at this in a 2020 patent application, which featured Cybertruck UI images. And in this patent application, this particular picture, as you can see here, has an area that displays 610 miles of range. This of course could just simply be a placeholder, but it also could be a hint that Tesla hopes to achieve quite a bit more than 500 miles of range with that largest pack tri-motor version. Now, generally speaking, you would expect a dual motor version of a truck to actually be slightly more efficient than a tri-motor version. However, with the Tesla Semi, Tesla described a tri-motor system where when you're actually cruising down the highway, um, only one motor needs to be engaged and the other two motors can actually be disengaged. When you need more power, the other two motors can be engaged, but it's very efficient if you can actually disengage motors while you're cruising down the highway. 
And what Tesla has been able to achieve when it comes to efficiency with their semi is incredible. And as we've talked about in the past, Tesla demonstrated a fully loaded semi being able to travel 500 miles on a single charge. And based on a Tesla semi efficiency of around 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, which Elon Musk tweeted out back in December of 2022, it's very possible that the Tesla semi battery pack is somewhere between 850 to 900 kilowatt hours which is quite a bit smaller than you might think. And as you can see, when compared to other comparable electric semi trucks, the Tesla semi is quite a bit more efficient. So with that being said, I think it's very possible once again, that the Cybertruck dual motor version will have a battery pack size of around 100 kilowatt hours and still be able to achieve 300 miles of range which would mean that it's able to travel three miles per kilowatt hour and would have an efficiency rating of 333 watt hours per mile. If the tri-motor version can be just as efficient due to the fact that two of those motors can be disengaged while cruising, that would allow a 200 kilowatt hour pack once again to offer up to 600 miles of range with those same efficiency numbers. If Tesla is able to achieve this kind of efficiency, this would be impressive as compared to other trucks that I have here on this chart. But once again, these numbers are not so much better that they're crazy. And I believe it's very possible that Tesla could actually achieve this kind of efficiency with the Cybertruck. Okay, lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about pricing. When Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck back in 2019, they listed the single motor version, which I don't believe will be made, but they listed that version at just a bit under $40,000 for a base cost. The dual motor all wheel drive version for a bit under 50,000 and the tri-motor version for a bit under $70,000. Obviously quite a bit has gone up since 2019 and I do expect that the Cybertruck will cost more than that. For one, I believe the market will pay quite a bit more than that for a Cybertruck. But two, raw material costs have gone up. At the very least, I do expect once again that the Cybertruck pricing will be comparable to the Ford F-150 Lightning price, which has gone up quite a bit recently. Um, but I do expect Tesla to be able to beat it when it comes to manufacturing costs quite a bit, no matter what they sell the Cybertruck for, because the Cybertruck will not require a paint shop, at least for the traditional uh, paint shop that you would think for painting the exterior of the body. Um, yes, Tesla will need to paint some components, some underbody components in the truck bed, etc. But for the main truck, it won't require a big paint shop. The body shop of the Cybertruck should be smaller than a traditional truck because it will feature underbody castings and the stainless steel exterior, which is folded into shape. In addition, the structural battery pack should simplify uh, manufacturing of this vehicle and the 48 volt architecture should also simplify the electronics of the truck. So based on other electric trucks that are either on the market right now or will be in the next year or so, I believe Tesla will offer the Cybertruck versions for somewhere between 60 to $100,000, which once again would be right there on par with the Ford F-150 Lightning. I would love to hear from you in the comments section below if you think that I'm right or wrong about these predictions. And also I wanna say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to each of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does does help make these videos possible. Thank you to my ultimate supporter, my performance supporters, and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.